Finding the right calendar app has the potential to 10x your life in terms of productivity and efficiency. Now, as someone who loves to try new app, throughout my life, I've tried more than 12 calendar apps. Sansama, Google Cal, Apple Cal, Sorted, Morgan, Rip, Routine, Fantastical, Archiflow, First Seed, Across, and finally, Amy. Now, I say finally because out of all these calendar apps, no app has kept me hooked like Amy. Like, I actually don't think I could revert back to anything else. It's kind of like how once you switch to iOS, it's really, really hard to go back to Android. That's the feeling. So Amy called themselves the joyful productivity app and honestly it makes me happy very happy and it makes everyone around me happy as well it's beautiful it's feature rich and it just works in this video I'm gonna be walking you through Amy on the desktop app so throughout this video you'll learn how it works what it looks like and what made me convert to Amy potentially forever now a quick disclaimer that I am currently on the pro yearly plan valued at just $72 a year so some of the features in this video might not be possible on the free version but if you sign up for a trial I think you could potentially try them out as well websites are the storefront of every company and Amy's is absolutely delightful to browse all of their CTAs and key sections are packaged like the app interface itself so it's like you're using the app before you even really use it genius for example here you can see what an email preview looks like here you can see what a calendar event looks like. So this means that even before they download the app, the user knows exactly what's right, let's what get started. Expect. So this is my Amy. Firstly, I wanna show you the icon on the dock. It shows the number of today. So today is June 26 and it will come up with 26. This calendar is beautiful. And every time I open this app, I get warm fuzzies because it's just so, I don't know, it just makes me feel happy. Like it's so playful, the UI is so clean. Every interaction is almost perfect in my opinion. I'm really excited to take you on a little tour. And let's start from the very top. So here on the top left, you can see this little mini calendar here. This is what you'll use to toggle through different months and days. Obviously we're in the weekly view, but if you click through, it will set whichever date you clicked on as the first date here. Let's go back to today. You can also go through different weeks. So by clicking these arrows, I'm toggling through different weeks here. Right in this top right corner, we have the different calendars that you can filter views for. So if I want to untoggle my personal, it will just get rid of all of my personal events. The same goes for every single other calendar. This meet functionality is really cool. I'm not gonna show you now just because then it will show all the other schedules of my colleagues, which I don't want to do. But basically, if your email is from an organization, you can search your colleagues, look at their calendars, and then from that, find the best time for you to meet. This is super useful, especially if you're working in a remote first team with a bunch of different time zones. It just makes it so much easier to schedule meetings and make sure that you're not booking anything way past the work hours or way too early their morning. Now let me take you through this middle section here, which is the main section of the Amy calendar. The first thing I want you to look at is this little sidebar -y thing. As you can see, I have three different time zones and this is so useful because I have friends all over the world and I need to see what time it is for them so I can schedule the right time to meet. It's really cool because you can change this within the settings. I can add, let's see, where do I want to add? Okay, let's add Tokyo. All right, I can give it a little emoji. I want to give it an onigiri. I can name it Tokyo. Cool, and while we're on the screen, I want to show you the other settings in general. You can choose the day that you want the calendar week to start. You can choose the time format, date format, and there's a bunch of other settings. I'm gonna quickly run through this just because there's so much stuff here. I want to start with a profile. You've got your different accounts. You can add different emails. Here in integrations, you can see that Amy has so many third-party integrations. I personally only use Spotify just cause, I don't know, I haven't really sorted out my life enough yet to use things like linear and my notion is very separate from what happens in my day to day. A lot of people integrate Todoist and create to-dos like that, but I personally just use Amy directly for anything to do -y. So you can request different integrations and that is kind of like, it's like kind of like crowdfunding requests, right? So it really is whatever the customers are asking for, Amy will build it. I think habit tracking will be the one that I want to request. That's done. I've just requested for them to 
integrate a habit tracker and you can also put in a custom request here. So I love that they really listen to their users and this is another reason I just I just love the team and I just love how they do things. Okay, here are the different calendars. You can change the color and type. Here in lists, you can create different lists for different to-dos and emails. Uh, you can integrate in and drag them straight into the calendar or to-dos. I'll show you a little bit more about this later. You can change the appearance. Now, wait for it. Oh, that's bright. But yeah, this is what light mode looks like. I'm a dark mode person, so I'm gonna go back to dark mode. You can change the app icon, change how the zoom works for calendar events, and you can also change the color names. How cool. And for meetings, you can choose the default meeting provider, la di da menu bar, plans, subscriptions. I'm on the yearly subscription, so worth it. Okay, now back to this screen. So this view currently has all of my calendars, everything from my work events to my personal events. As you can see, when events finish, it automatically crosses it out. All of these gray areas here are the ones that I have locked out for people to book calls with me. I'll show you a little bit more about the, how the scheduling function works later, but for now, let's go ahead and schedule something. The easiest way to schedule something is just double clicking I can put in a new event, like, I don't know, dinner. As you can see here, it actually auto populates some of the previous events with this exact same name so that I don't have to put in the details. So let's go in, uh, let's say Jim. Here you can say I have multiple events named Jim. I'm gonna click this one because it already has a location and it has the uh, time frame the emoji and everything. I can change the calendar that this event is created with. I can add guests if I want to like add my boyfriend, I can do that. Send the event to notify them or I can send event without notifying. All right, let's discard those changes. I can click all day and it will automatically go to the top of the day. I'm gonna untoggle that. Here I can change the time, the date, I can set myself as busy or free. So if people want to book calls with me and I'm very flexible, that's a thing you can do. Lock the event, make private. You can add it to a list to categorize. You can set a reminder. You can change the color, more options. It's just great. Look at this, like it's slightly translucent. It looks beautiful on the entire app. I just, I love that. All right, and if I click out, it automatically goes away. And look at how playful that UI is. So another way that you can add an event is using this AI chat. Now, I believe this is a premium feature, but let me quickly show you how this works. So I'm going to say create a free meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. All right. And if we click schedule event, it will automatically create an event for us. How awesome. Okay, delete that. In the search bar, it will say the weather, how many events you've completed, and it will give you a rundown of what's coming up. Another thing I want to point out in this bottom menu bar here is that there's a weather widget. It is currently 11 degrees Celsius in Buenos Aires. This is a timer. You can use it for Pomodoro, which I really like to do, or you can change the time duration here if you're um, waiting for something or you're trying to do a longer period of focus work. You can start the timer. When the timer ends, it will make a sound and that sound is actually really pleasant. It's not annoying at all. And you can pause it if you want. Here you can like activate or deactivate the widgets in the dock. The layout change. I'm gonna go ahead and use the keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna go option one, just the inbox. Option two, split view. Option three, just the calendar. Uh, what's more is that there are different views. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and click D. It's going to give me the day view. If I click week, it will take me back to the weekly view. And if I click M, it will give me a view of my entire month. I personally like to keep it on week. I can start with today or I can make it start on Monday. I can also show weekends if I want, if you want to calendarize your weekend as well. All right. Another thing you can do is you can change the number of visible days here. So you can just see three days, four days. Let's keep it at five days. 
great. Now, if you use any other third-party calendar or scheduling apps like Calendly or Cal.com, fret not, Amy has a nice substitute. So here, if I click share, you can share links of your calendar. So I already have this link. And basically, if you see here, these are the times that I've blocked out to meet with me on this particular calendar. So I wonder what happens if I open this in a new tab. So this is what the person sees when they open my link. As you can see, that has my Amy profile picture, has the event name, where we're going to meet, which is Google Meet. And then they can select a slot. They can even um, toggle the time that they're in and select date. But yes, yeah, you can see there are these nice little slots. If they want, they can pick a time, simply pick a time. If they want to change it, go back and change it. They can change the city that they're in, select a date, and then um, put their email in, their name, and confirm, and it will send me an email invite. How clean is that? No need for any third-party calendar services or scheduling apps. Amy makes tasks really easy. So for example, I have this task here called make dinner. If I click into it, you can see I've gotten really granular, like chop the onions. Let's add another sub to do, like boil water. You can add as many sub to do's as you want. You can change the duration of this task. Let's change it to two hours. You can even start a timer in your calendar. You can mark as done, move to a certain list, set the priority. So if it's like a really you know important priority, you can do that and schedule it for today, tomorrow, next Monday, set duration, deadline. I can click and drag this straight into my day like so. If you want a way to really easily block your time and prioritize different tasks in your life, this makes it super easy to do so. What's more is that because it's connected to your emails, for example, I have this email from Airbnb and open it up. Um, it has like different touch points. So because this is a new reservation, it doesn't have any touch points, but Imagine if at work you have a long email thread with multiple people. This is really useful because it shows you the different dates that these were sent and you can um, correspond these to your calendar. You can also see the attachments in this email thread. You can mark this email as done. You can schedule a certain like, I don't know, a calendar event or to do. Reply directly from Amy forward. It's just, it's really nice. And let me show you one more thing. That's right, you can just click and drag it and create a calendar event. The last thing I wanna show you is probably my favorite functionality of Amy. Let's go into daily view. And for here, you can see this green line. Remember how I said that before you could integrate with Spotify? So one really cool thing that Amy does is that it syncs with Spotify and logs whatever song I was listening to at that time of the day. And you know how like throughout the day, the music that you listen to usually parallels the emotions or the tasks that you're doing at that time. I think this is a really cool way to kind of keep like an audio diary of your life. Uh, it also does this with fitness if you have an Apple Watch or Apple Health integration with your Amy and it does it with sleep as well. It just logs your life without you even having to do anything. And voila, that was my little walkthrough of Amy, my most favorite calendar app and the only one that I've been using for quite some time now and potentially, I don't know, forever. I hope this was a helpful walkthrough and that you are sufficiently Amy pilled. So tell me you are Amy pilled. I'd be very surprised if you're not, but if not, if you still have doubts or questions, you can confide in me in the comment section below. Now, if you are Amy pilled and you're considering migrating to Amy, download it via the link below at no cost to you at all. Trust me, I just want to tell the team that I love them and that I am sending people to their product because it's so bloody amazing. And lastly, if you liked this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, well, just let me know why in the comments below. That was all. Ciao.